This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have a unique entrepreneur, Bill Hemmer. He has a brand new show, the host of The Bill Hemmer Reports, but also has always been the chief anchor there with Fox in the Big Apple. Welcome to the playbook, Bill. Good to be here. How are you guys doing? Doing great. You know, I love, I've had Katie Couric, I've had great news people, and I love having him on the playbook because we talk about accelerated change. I don't think anything's changed as quickly and as much as news has. And I love your perspective. You've been in the game for a long time and have seen a lot of change from sports news to business news to politics. Where do you see the biggest change in the news right now? In the COVID times, in the COVID yeah. era, we'll call I mean, you know, I, I think that, I think what we're living through is substantial. And I, I don't know if we fully realize it yet or have been able to take the time to appreciate it yet. And my feeling is once we come out of it, I mean, all of our lives will be determined by what was pre-COVID and what was post-COVID. And then there's going to be that sliver of reality in the middle of during COVID. And I think these, these moments are actually indelible. Um, it, you're not going to forget about them. With regard to TV news, um, heck, the industry's changing dramatically from a technical standpoint. Um, and thank goodness we've got the technology to pull off what we do. You know, people coming from their own homes and their basements, and Skype and Zoom and everything on down the line. Uh, what I find curious is that, you know, we're, we're always striving for a better product. But that was impossible here. And if you think that the audience has accepted what we're now producing, I would have never predicted that before. You know, the COVID delays and people talking over each other and, you know, firing up a, a Zoom chat where there's, you know, the quality is questionable, but, um, but they have. And um, I guess in large part, I, a, lot, a lot of people got a lot of time on their hands. A lot of people are unsure about today. They're unsure about tomorrow. And they come to us for maybe not only information, but... Um, trying to figure out what's in store for them. And I, I think that's a big part of what our role is right now, trying to help people anticipate the future based on what we can figure out today. You know, it's so amazing because I've watched you and your career and I have a rule about journalism. I like people that are more interested than interesting. And that creates the show to be interesting when the reporter themselves are interested and, and authentically interested in what's going on to get to the, the truth and the right answers and to help people have some clarity and balance and focus in their lives, especially in times like these. What are some of the tricks that you use or techniques, I should say, not really tricks, because your shows are really interesting and you really delve into your interest of the subject matter, interest of the person that you're talking to? Um. Just had a call come in. I was, I was like, hey, like you I said, like, people are much more forgiving nowadays. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, my buddy Bobby. I'm like, a decline. Get back to him later. Um, tricks of the trade. Um, I, 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 you have to be as real as you can be. You can't fake it. Um, people call you out in a heartbeat. Um, I tend to pick the topics and, and my we toward to gra gravitate toward um, the issues that we understand the most. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. Let me just get that guy off there. Uh, I did a podcast this week on Amy Coney Barrett. Well, um, the reason I did it is because we're getting ready for these hearings. And part of the reason why I wanted to learn about it is because I've not yet been able to have the time to study what she has said in the past or much about her. And we're gonna be in the thick of it in about two weeks time. So, you know, part of the motivation there was to learn a bit more and get a foundation for knowledge. And I, I, I think, I mean, for me, that's, that's my basic approach to just about every day. Like what's curious, what's here, um, what's there. I, I tend to think that I um, maybe have a curious mind and, um, Ultimately, that's led me to the most interesting aspects of my experience here in the past 55 years. That's amazing. The outside influences is a big deal. You know, we see even our most objective reporters being swayed by 
other outside influences today. There's so much going on. And as you look, I think it's, to me, frustrating and unfair because I have so many friends in all different places. You've worked for different news organizations in your career and have friends, I'm sure, still in all the different other channels and stations. Um, but yet, it seems like some of uh, the reporters are influenced tremendously by outside influence. You seem to stick your ground. You seem to give your opinion uh, and allow the outside influences to stay away from you. Um, where do you stand on those outside influences and how are you able to withstand the pressure that you may be under to be swayed by the outside influence? Pay attention to all, all sides. Um, uh, I think you have to, it's your obligation. Um, but you, you have to do what's fair also. Um, and I, I think you, you're only going to be able to tolerate that for so long. Um, if at all, um, I, look, I, I, I'm from the Midwest. I have a common mind and you know, if I read enough, I think that'll be my, my best preparation for uh, a daily show and, and hopefully over 60 minutes or if it's longer than that, then. I can give you enough balance in a story that you now have the opportunity to make up your own mind in it. I, I think that's the way it should be done. And, you know, we're both Buckeyes uh, from the Midwest. Uh, your aspirations when you were younger, were they to be a journalist or have you angled your way through a variety of lessons in order to get to the place that you're at? How has yeah, your great, career great question. moved around it? Yeah, um, I knew two things growing up, sports and music. So I was either going to be a disc jockey or a sports reporter. Uh, the second one worked out and um, I, I quickly learned that it was, um, it was a topic that did not have a lot of growth to it. And so I went out to find something where I could learn something new every day. And you know, since your podcast is about how you excel and how you uh, be successful, I mean, that, that was the key to me. Um, figuring out what's out there. Um, so what I did was I quit my job and I backpacked around the world for a year. And a lot of people think, you know, this is like Paris, London, Rome. It wasn't. It was, it was circumnavigation of the globe and mostly third world countries. And I did it by myself and uh, largely. And um, there's not a day that goes by that I didn't learn something out there that I employ something in my job professionally. Uh, what did that do? You know, that was a curious mind. I wanted to find and discover and see where everything was, as I said back then. Um, and it, it just led me to some amazing things. And I, I guess for the purpose of your audience and what you're trying to, to get to and what makes people successful, I, I would just say, you know, follow your own curious mind. And if you do, you, I mean, the sky's the limit on what you might be able to do for yourself. Um, and I think, I think that, I think there's great value in just thinking that way. And, you know, the, those offside influences that we're talking about, they're in particular strength when in our mid twenties, we make a decision to start voting for what we want. I think you were probably, I think working for the Bengals in your mid twenties, when you decided, Hey, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm going to go travel. You know, were there those pressures from family, friends? I know when, I left, uh, I graduated law school, was going to be a litigator and had a huge job. And I said, no, I'm going to go into the internet. My mom literally said, the internet's a fad. You're making the uh -huh. biggest mistake of your life. And people laughed at me, scoffed at me, made fun of me. After I was a millionaire, they all asking me for jobs. Um, you know, what did you, because I think this idea of voting for what you want is a huge component today with all the transition in profession, with people being freelancers, working remotely. We now have an opportunity to segregate or separate ourselves from that outside voice that pressures us to do what everyone else wants to do or worse, what we don't want to do. What was it internally that gave you the courage to say, you know what? I don't care what anyone says. I'm gonna go travel the world for a year. Yeah, I don't know if it's courage so much as I had my midlife crisis when I was 26 years old. Yeah. So I just felt like the walls of the world were gonna close in if I, if I didn't do this before turning 30. And I can't be more honest with you than that. Um, uh, what, what, what I couldn't anticipate was the avenues that it opens up for you. I guess that, that's the one takeaway, I think, um, that I would like everyone to understand for themselves personally. 
you know, it's interesting because you have a unique perspective of uncertainty. And I want to share a little bit about myself. I, I think this whole idea of, you know, oh my gosh, we're on uncertain times. You've been in the news profession. <laughs> I can't, if I had a dollar for every time I heard about uncertain times, I always tell people, you know, we have millions of downloads. If anybody out there knows what's going to happen tomorrow, please let Bill and I know, because we know how to make billions of dollars if you absolutely know what's going to happen. What is your perspective of uncertainty? Because you are surrounded by a tremendous amount of news and change, and it must seem like the world is always in chaos to you. So I'd love for you to share your perspective of uncertainty. Um, I, look, I mean, if you sat in my office every day, there's just so much data coming in. You know, there's stuff from so many different sources, and um, it's our duty and obligation to pay attention to all of it, but not only when we're in the building, but when we're, when we're not. Uh, today, I had the Reds game on, you know, I mean, postseason. They haven't scored a run yet. They're rowing two. I haven't had something to cheer about in seven years being a Cincinnati fan. Um, um, I, I would say, however, that um, what, what we're trying to figure out maybe is um, What is the state of play for the world? What is the state of play for the country? What are the stakes? What's on the line for you, your family, your friends? And I saw a piece earlier in the week that stuck with me. It was about uh, not trying to think about life after COVID, but accepting life as it is during COVID. It made a ton of sense to me. And uh, kind of changed my attitude a little bit. You know, we're six months into this and I, I think oftentimes we're thinking about when, where's the end? Uh, when does it arrive? And if we adjust our mentality a little bit to say, you know, this, this, this is the way it's, it is, then maybe we have a better shot of getting through the day better. Um, and so I'm going to try doing that a lot more. Nice. Keeping a strong mindset. Last question real quick about Bill Helmer reports. So there's so much noise out there. There's so many different programs, so many different podcasts. You know, I challenge myself to think, gosh, you know, how do I stay at the top of the podcast game with a million and a half podcasts? I couldn't imagine, you know, having a, your own Bill Hemmer report show. How do you distinguish yourself between in, in between all of this noise? How do you see your frequency, you know, really resonating with people? What's that difference? Question. I don't think I have a very good answer for you because I, I don't I don't look at it that way. Uh, I tell you how I look at it. Um, I want to be fast, but I want to be right. Um, and it's okay to be quick, but if you're wrong, it's a problem. And I hope over time that um, that the audience sees that. And I find myself being hyper vigilant about knowing the information. And, and if I do that every day, I, I've got a really good chance of getting pretty close to what the facts are. Um, I, think, I think it's the best game plan. It, work, it, it works for me, it's worked so far. I hope it continues to work that way. But um, a lot of people ask you, you know, what's your, what's your key to preparation? And um, I think you got to pay attention to everything. And I, I think actually preparation is your best defense because then you're going to be ready for just about any scenario that presents itself to you. I mean, look, we put a show together at seven o'clock in the morning. We change that show at 10 o'clock in the morning. We meet again at one o'clock in the afternoon and we sit down in the chair at two fifths and the whole thing is, is upside down. <laughs> now in a cable universe, that's cool because then you, you, you've got some velocity in the show and you're actually doing what the audience expects, which is live television. And you're bringing people news and information in a live fashion, which we really, which we love. Um, we don't like the days where we're just sitting back and waiting for things. And there are so many times you just sit down in that chair and things are just changing. But I think we built such a really good team that, you know, throughout the Fox chan news channel, we stay nimble. And the reason we do that is because we want to be able to turn on a dime on anything because we know that we're competing with things like Twitter. And, you know, our competition is doing the same thing we're doing at CNN and MSNBC. And if we can be fast and also be correct, then we've got two for two in that category. Um, and that's, that's, that's kind of how we, 
we hope it rolls. Um, if it doesn't go that way, we, st we, we still want to have a program that has enough quality into it. So folks like yourself can say, you know what, I got something from that show. I didn't waste my time. There was some value in me spending the last hour with him. So those, those are your goals. And I love the way that you do illuminate what you don't know. And a lot of people, you know, they love to, if they don't know, just create the news for themselves. And you are so factually based and truth conscious as far as trying to report the truth as quickly as you can, which to me seems like almost an impossibility. I'd much rather be on the podcast thing, trying to draw out your, your secrets to success. So I'm totally impressed by what you do and appreciative because I think what's missing a lot of time today is I think a lot of news people see themselves as entertainers uh, more than reporters. And it's so important to have a place to go where you can rely that we're getting your best effort of what's going on so we can assess the situation according to our own values. And I think you do probably the best job at that. And I really like the new show, which is why I wanted to have you come on because appreciate that. Thank you. very few people do that. And congratulations on that. Everyone, it's three o'clock uh, uh, every weekday, right? The Friday, three Eastern time. Noon if you're in California. But th thank you for your kind words. I hope to do you right over time. Uh, another Buckeye to one Buckeye. You know, I grew up as a Reds fan. My parents were from Dayton, Ohio. Originally, I moved you know, cool. born in Akron, but it was a challenge to be a Padre fan now, so I know how you feel. Good deal. You went from Montgomery County to Stark County, I think. You got it. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, Good well, to be with you. Hammer, thank you so much for joining me, Dave Meltzer, here on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.